Crack Crack, welcome back to my vlog. Isang magandang gabi sa lahat ng mga chismos ang nag-aabang ngayon sa mga latest kaganapan nga sa mundo ng beauty pageant, lalo na sa kontrobersiya ng Miss Cosmo 2024. So, inaabangan ko talaga yung pa-live ni US Virgin Islands mga karagkarag sa kanya mga pasabog na revelasyon at yun nga, nakahabol nga ako mga karagrag of course, isishare ko rin sa inyo yung mga nasagap ko na mga pachika galor na tiyak mapas, mapataas din yung mga iknat na mga kilay ninyo, so watch this when the stage collapsed and I don't know how much I should speak on this so I probably, there's, there's more story to this but I'm not gonna speak on it because it's not my story to tell but at least one person got crushed um, and Cosmo told us he was okay But um, there's another person that is rumored to not have been okay that got stayed, that got crushed by the stage. Um, and that's not my story to tell. I didn't see it. Don't know what happened. Um, tell, what you tell what you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my, 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 I, I feel my fever spiking, my adrenaline, like talking about this stuff. My adrenaline's going up. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Um, but, yeah, so when I came out, I saw the girls were crying, hysterical, like, This was like an almost, it looked like a mass casualty situation, the way people were reacting. I um, mean, I don't blame the girls. It was a very, you know, very traumatic experience. But um, they were, the injuries were really bad. There was, I don't know how many swollen, sprained ankles. Um, one girl broke her toe uh, or looked like a broken toe. She was so tough. I was so proud of her. I was like, you go, girl. And she ended up doing really well um, at finals. So, girl, you know who you are. I'm so proud of you. I love you. Um Yeah, her, her toe was bad. Um, lots of uh, really bad sprained ankles. Like, girls were already s swollen and purple, and it had just um, it had ju just happened. I'm like, oh, my God, these girls are in really bad shape. And even even some girls had, like, injured their arms and their shoulders because they had fallen um, and hit themselves. They were, they were falling over each other. Like, um, yeah, passing out. Two girls had a total mental breakdown, um, according to... Uh, one of the staff members, and I helped one of the girls with the mental breakdown. She was puking, crying, hysterical, um, and again, no no fault uh, for the way they handled it afterwards. Um, and but you um, can tell them that a lot of your training is, yeah. um, you know, mass casualty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so, you know, you understand that the reactions are going to be different mm -hmm. from each individual. Absolutely, yeah. Like my mom said, a lot of my training is <laughs> curtailed to exactly what happened um, or just having a complete mental breakdown like some of the girls have, like puking, crying. People handle these things so many different ways. Um, this is exactly what my training is on. Um, I've been trained for a long time on this stuff, and that's why when I came out of the bathroom, I was like, oh, my gosh, this feels like a mass casualty situation because girls are, like, completely just having a really rough time. And what really did, rough time. What did you do from there? Yeah, so what I did from there is, so one of the girls, and I don't know if this has been released, so I'm not going to say her name, She she was cut right here above her eye, um, and it it was only a cut about maybe this big. It could have been even smaller, um, but you know head injuries they bleed a lot. They bleed a lot. So the girls were re really freaking out. She and she had her eye, or she had her um, her hand covering her eye, uh, so I couldn't see her injury. But I ran to her. The staff had already taken her, her taken her in another room. Um, They didn't even blink an eye when I went to go in there. They're just like, yes, Lennon, please. Because <laughs> I haven't taken care of a lot of people since then, so they just opened the door, let me in. Um, and she handled it so well because she thought she lost her eye by the way people were reacting. I thought she lost her eye by the way people were reacting. You know, she's covered, um, and then she slowly takes her hand off, and I'm like, oh, my God, her eye's still there. I was ready to shove a towel, shove something in there to stop the bleeding. I was like, okay, we're, we're ready for this. I was like, take your hand off. And um, she was luckily she was okay. It was just a small cut, but um, I none of the staff had a first aid kit. There was no first aid kit anywhere within Cosmo. Um, but yeah, mine was back at the hotel room because I can't carry around a first aid kit all the time, a huge one all the time. Um, I had everything I would have needed in there, but again, I didn't have it with me. Have it with me. It was back at the hotel. Um, the stadium that the stage collapse happened at, we the, there was there was a first aid kit, but I opened it up. The only thing in the first aid kit was, like, Tylenol and, a, like, a bug bite patch or, like, a back sprain patch or something like that. It was, like, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a, a, a gauze filled with chemicals. I'm, like, well, I can't oh. use that. And I, yeah, and I don't, I, don't, I don't read Vietnamese, so I opened it up, 
and they're like, don't use that. I'm like, I'm, I'm not, I'm just looking at it because I don't have, I don't have anything. I don't have anything to use to help her. Use toilet paper. Um, yeah, but the bathroom, I, my mom was like, you could use toilet paper. I'm like, the bathroom no, was so you far away. Use toilet paper, right? No, I don't know. I don't remember what I used. I don't remember. <laughs> it was, it all happened really fast. Um, but she, she handled it like a champ. She was actually one of the most calm girls. I was like, you go girl. I was like, as long as you're not in shock, you know, just keep, keep, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> um, but then, so she finally went to the hospital. Um, it took a while for the girls to go to the hospital who needed to go to the hospital. Um, and then I went into the main room where we all were, and this is before the CEO came in, but a lot of girls had so many injuries, like so many ankle injuries. I was going around um, propping up foots, like on suitcases, and we had little stools. So I was going around and, you know, making sure all their feet were elevated and things like that. Um, and so it was just, it was a lot, and girls were really hysterical, rightfully so. Um, the, the hysteria didn't calm down for a long time. Even when the CEO came in, um, Henry, he... He he got to witness a lot of the trauma that was done to them, um, which I'm glad because it was just. What did he tell you to do or not to do? Yeah, um, he told us not to not to contact anyone, not to contact our national directors. Um, we weren't allowed to. Tell we weren't allowed to tell anyone about what happened. Um, I'm pretty sure he said our families were okay because someone asked, or like, can we contact our family? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he said our families were okay, but not to contact our national directors. Not to tell anyone. Oh, and our sashes were immediately confiscated. Like before anything, before before we'd even been um, like put into a room, they immediately took all our sashes. Um, uh, so that was the priority. I had not heard that part. The priority yeah. was to collect your sashes over the. Yeah, one, one person. One person was going around collecting all the sashes. Oh mine was one of the first ones. They thought I was going to the hospital with the girls. Um, so mine was one of the first one to get confiscated. And then at, at first, I just thought it was only the girls going to the hospitals. But no, um, it was just it was all the girls. Um, and yeah, it was before we even got like ushered into the room and stuff. I'm pretty sure because I wasn't in the room yet. I'm pretty sure other girls were still around. Um, but it was like one of their first things was to collect all the sashes, um, which I thought was really odd. And I was like, oh, well. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so I'm glad the CEO kind of got kind of got to see um, what the girls kind of went through. Um, and he went around, shook our hands, things like that. Girls were hobbling. I had a sprained ankle at the time. I didn't sprain my ankle during this, but I, I still had a sprained ankle at the time. And I walked past. I was like, I will not hobble past this man. I walk normal. Um, I was like, I'm not going to hobble. I'm not going to limp. But, um, yeah, well, one of the girls ended up, um, again, I'm not going to say who or anything like that, but one of the girls stood up and asked. Um, and I felt so bad because she was one of my close friends. She said, can can we tell our national directors? Because I really don't want them to panic. Um, and eventually he said, you can tell them you're okay. Don't tell them anything else. At least that's what I remember him saying. Um, and, this again, this is in shortened words, but that was basically what he said. Um, so yeah, that was just, it was a lot. Yeah, It was a lot. Uh, so triage, triaging everyone, it was, you know, and seeing, and two of the girls directly saw something really, really bad happen to two of the, the stage crew and hearing what they were saying, it was just a lot. And also, um, they were, I'm, again, I don't know this for sure, but they were hushed, um, again, like not to tell anyone about what happened. Um, the Cosmo staff had gone over to them in the parking lot after we got off the bus at the hotel. Um, and I thought it was odd. I was like, oh, I want to listen to this. So I like went over there and they're like, what you doing here, Lennon? What you doing here, Virgin Islands? I'm like, oh, nothing. Just go to talk with them. Because I wanted to hear what's going on. Um, I didn't end up hearing anything, but they, I just thought it was really odd. Um, at this point, you still had a little bit of confidence that they would make things right definitely they said they were going to send a psychologist did they send a psychologist they sent a psychologist around to different rooms i never like a psychologist never knocked on our door never came to our door um some of the staff the staff came two of my favorite girls from the staff came um to check on us um mostly one of my roommates because she had seen a lot she was one of the girls who had tripped over girls saw girls girls get yanked out like there were girls having to get pulled out like our stage managers and our security our security was amazing um the, i don't know if you, you guys have probably seen them in the in the background they're the the guys in the black suits looking all sharp all the time i love them to death they were great I think we're gonna um, oh the organization didn't buy me a phone no no mm -mm, i bought my phone um so i have my vietnamese phone and my 
American, um, American phone. My, my, sec my security person went and bought it. And actually, Mr. Loy was helping translate, which is super nice. Um, so that was, that was great. He helped with that. But no, I, I paid for my phone. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, they're, they're supposed to send a psychologist around to each room. They didn't end up doing that. Only certain rooms got the psychologist. Um, but yeah, so, so that's kind of what happened. But there are a lot of comments about around here saying that, uh, the thoughts on your, there are thoughts on the press conference yesterday, like when mm -hmm. she had the press conference and they were, and she was talking about the people who were sleeping and who were sick with their leg injuries. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I just, you know, I have a hard time when, um, and this was kind of, I, again, I didn't spend much time around, um, you know, the winner, Tata. But um, from, from what I did send around her, I really liked her. She was great. But um, I just have a hard time when um, people uplift others, to uplift, uplift themselves and put down others. I don't, I don't feel that we should uh, put down others to uplift ourselves. Um, and I felt like that, that might have been a little bit what was happening. Again, I'm not going to speak on it too much because I don't like to go into, you know, drama or things about the girls or anything like that unless it's facts. Um, but I just, I really feel for the girls who were kind of attacked, um, in that scenario, that press conference or things like that, because it's just, um, this, yeah, to me, that's not really what a queen does, especially because, you know, some girls got treatment of able to sleep in, able to get their hair and makeup done every day, um, able to come with no makeup or able to, you know, not have great manners and things like that. Um, yeah, show up late, have a bus waiting, or, like, be on live at breakfast. Um, meanwhile, the girls are waiting on the bus. Um, just different things like that where it's just, it's really, it's really hard to see that. Uh, it's hard to listen to, oh, other girls are making excuses when they themselves had a lot of those same issues going on, you know. Yeah, it's, it's just, felt you know. It felt she was also justifying her win like she was already defending the decision i again that's you know i whoever Cosmo wanted to choose that is completely <laughs> up to them it's, it's it's their queen um but it's just i don't feel that a queen should put down others to elevate herself um that goes for every single every single queen every single cosmo queen every single person i just that's never been me and i don't i don't condone that you know it's really hard to, you, to see that. Do you think it was fair what they were saying about um, Atisa? Oh, I don't think it was fair what they were saying about Atisa at all. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. She had a doctor's note. She had everything. Um, she was in a wheelchair. And again, I it was funny because um, I got sent like the edit of, it was like a fan edit of Atisa in a wheelchair. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so mean. Why would they put her in a wheelchair? That's horrible. And then I figured out she was actually in a wheelchair. I was like, oh my goodness, they weren't being mean. That She's actually in a wheelchair. Um, and I, my heart just went out for her because she, you know, she had the doctor's note, she had everything. Um, and it, this was very real. Like everyone's pain was very real and very valid. Um, and I was, I was proud of her for listening, um, to the doctor's advice because, you know, a lot of girls wouldn't probably, and then they'd end up paying for it later. So I was very proud of her for listening to doctor's advice. So yan ang mga karagarag na rinig na ninyo ang mga pasabog ng mga pati chismisan maritisan galor ni US Virgin Island. Mahaba ba yung pa-live niya kanina? So ito lang muna yung ma-share ko sa inyo. Bukas yung continuation. Kay matulog din tayo pag my time, di ba? So that's all for tonight mga karagarag and don't forget to like and my don't forget to like and subscribe my YouTube channel Kuragan Karag, ang babaeng lang nagkikaragrag sa mundo ng chismisan sa pa Diha na mo good night.